Hey, order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, we've been bombing Islamic State in Iraq for months. Uh, by the end of the week, we're almost certain to be hitting them in Syria, too. Tomorrow, Prime Minister's questions has been cancelled, and MPs will spend all day debating the issue before voting. David Cameron said he would only call for such a vote if he was certain of winning it. And that certainty has handed to the Prime Minister after a fractious shadow cabinet meeting in which Jeremy Corbyn was forced to give his MPs a free vote. And about 50, maybe more of them, are expected to support the government. This is what the Prime Minister had to say last night. Well, I believe there's growing support across Parliament for the compelling case there is to answer the call from our allies to act against ISIL in Syria and in Iraq. The headquarters, in many ways, of the uh, terrorists actually is in Syria, and it makes no sense uh, to recognise this border in the action we take when ISIL themselves don't recognise this border. So it's in the national interest. It's the right thing to do. We'll be acting with our allies. Uh, we will be careful and responsible as we do so. But in my view, it's right to do this to help to keep our country safe. We're joined now by Labour MP Mary Cray, who is uh, minded to support the extension of airstrikes. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Absolutely. I've been very clear um, since I visited the Lebanon in September and saw the humanitarian tragedy in that country that we have a duty to act in the Middle East and that the war in Syria has spilled now over into uh, Turkey, the bombs in Ankara, Lebanon, Jordan, all those countries really on the front line of this humanitarian crisis and carrying on with business as usual but is not the answer. How does more bombing, or the British joining in the bombing, solve the humanitarian crisis or even ameliorate the humanitarian crisis? I think we have to look at it as one part of a full political um, diplomatic framework. We now have the International Syria Support Group meeting monthly, and the next meeting is in Vienna, um, with Iran, Saudi Arabia, Russia, all now engaged in a way that they weren't engaged in the failed Geneva peace process of the last three years. And my hope is that those peace talks will lead to a ceasefire in six months, will lead to democratic elections and the ending of Assad's reign of terror against his own people. But why not let these peace talks then take their course if you think they're so positive? Why get involved in the bombing in Syria in the interim? We're already involved in overflying with drone and reconnaissance uh, intelligence for the coalition of 60 countries that are already engaged. We're engaged in Iraq and we're effectively stopping at the border, a border that ISIL does not recognise. I think there's also a, a moral imperative. Um, we founded the United Nations. My party's an internationalist party and I think when our nearest uh, friend and ally, the French, the Americans, are calling on us to help them in their hour of need after that terrible attack that we saw in Paris and we've seen attacks in many other places in Beirut as well in Lebanon that we have a duty to listen to that and of course the United Nations Security um, Council resolution supported by countries as various as China Venezuela Angola and New Zealand calls on us to use all necessary measures so there's a clear legal basis as well Caroline Lucas the UN has passed a resolution which paves the way for action and our major allies, including the French, would like us to join them. Why shouldn't we? I think at the minute we shouldn't because there hasn't been a strong enough case made by the Prime Minister that our getting involved would actually either make Britain safer or indeed bring more likelihood of peace in, in the region. I think looking at the evidence given to the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, it's really clear that nearly all of the evidence that they received was that if we get involved in this, mm -hmm. it actually is going to feed the ISIS narrative which they would love to be able to present them as the kind of guardians of Islam against the Crusaders from the West. If we play into that, recruits will grow. And that's already been happening. Let's look at what's happened from the bombing so far. Were, Mary were, were, were you says, against the uh, bombing in, in Iraq? 
just now. Yeah. Uh, 2014. Yeah, uh, yes, I was. I, I don't believe that... So you bombing... don't think we should be involved at all, militarily? I don't think we should be involved at all militarily. And what I was going to go on to say mm -hmm. was that if you look at the evidence of the bombing that's taken, uh, taken part so far over Iraq, then basically over the last year, um, we've seen more recruits, double the number of recruits have actually gone to ISIS since that bombing has started because we are feeding that narrative about this being but they've also lost issue ground. of... They've lost major ground as well. Well, that is disputed. They have lost ground, but a lot oh. of it is, is deserts, and they've also gained places <laughs> like Palmyra. So let's look at whether or not the bombing yeah, that's Palmyra's taken part... Is, Palmyra's to, in Syria. Yes, but I'm talking about the bombing so they, that the U.S. has been doing in Syria. We, the, right. the, the U.S. has been bombing Syria for a long time, and it hasn't driven ISIS back. We, it does risk the, um, the narrative that more recruits will come to ISIS. That's already happening. Um, and I want to say as well that by saying that we don't want to drop bombs doesn't mean we don't want action. Of course we want action, and there's plenty we could be doing, putting pressure on Turkey, for example, to seal the border, to stop the weapons and stopping the oil sales that is feeding ISIS. What does putting pressure mean? It means doing what, what's happening already over the well, refugee well, crisis, speaking to them, putting pressure on them, uh, looking at um, when it comes to Saudi in, in particular, I think we could be looking at all kinds of financial measures that we've been happy enough to take against Russia over the Ukraine, and yet we're not taking those measures against uh, Syria, uh, against Saudi Arabia, rather. You or want indeed us to Turkey. take financial sanctions against Saudi Arabia? I think that would be a, a, something we should certainly consider, yes, because at the moment we know that Saudi isn't clamping down on the families and others who are still channeling finance towards ISIS. So how, how at the you, minute, we always how, look at the military um, response as the fastest and easiest thing to do. And we don't necessarily look at other ways in which ISIS is being fed. It's being fed by finance. It's being fed by weapons. Well, it's being fed by the chaos of the, of the Syrian civil war. And all of fair. those need to be addressed as well. Well, the Syrian economy has effectively collapsed into a wartime economy funded by arms smuggling, oil smuggling, people smuggling, and um, the extortion of families um, of, of the 60,000 disappeared people. Um, so we have effectively almost got a failed state in Syria. Caroline talks about sealing the border uh, with Turkey. The last thing that um, the humanitarian uh, people working in Turkey want to see is borders sealed, because of course we have huge flows of people out of Syria. Over half of the population is Turkey. now displaced. So we've got four million people who've left the country. 6 million people homeless within the country. It is in an absolutely desperate state. And as long as we leave um, Islamic State there, they now have 30,000 fighters from over 100 different countries. But if Mary, we are prepared to... Point. Let me finish oh, no. my point. If we are prepared to just allow them to continue to regroup and recruit in Raqqa, then we will never have peace in Iraq and we will never have peace in but Syria. Mary, on that point, there were 15,000 recruits last year from 80 countries. My point is that bombing precisely has led to the increase of recruits to now being double at 30,000 from 100 countries. You what we are doing here is actually encouraging more people to see this as a, as a fight between the West and Islam, and they are therefore actually increasing the number of recruits going to that area. Surely, before we start getting involved in more bombing, we should look at the effect that the bombing has had I, so far, I and it has not you, had you, positive you impacts. Posit, you posit the effect that the bombing has had this effect. I would argue that the effect of having a failed state in Syria, the effect that they are the only people seen to be standing up to Assad in his own country means that, in effect, there were 200,000 free Syrian army fighters two, two years ago. Now they're down to about 70,000. A lot of people, there's a lot of fluidity in well, Syria, but the problem we've got is, as long as Assad is there, that they, people, you know, are either are co-opted into fighting for them at the, at the point of a gun. So they, it's their propaganda as well. Let's, but let's the go idea back to the, the 70,000 ground troops. Where, where are these phantom 70,000 ground troops? are going to support us because we know that bombing on its own everybody agrees that bombing on its own won't work that we need ground forces david cameron came to the commons and claimed there were 70,000 ground forces who were not pro assad and who were not uh, extremist and that figure has been absolutely hammered by all of the experts i mean robert fisk in yesterday's independent newspaper calling it a complete phantom a, a complete mockery to suggest those ground troops are there Mary there Craig. are hundreds this different why, this is why the peace process is so important because um, as the free syrian army is 
murdered by Assad, there will be fewer and fewer people able to protect their towns and able to stand up for him. So we need a multilateral peace framework in order for the people of Syria to take back their country from the jihadis. And the idea that we just let them get on with it. We found get mass on graves. We, we found mass graves. They were 70 miles away from Baghdad in May of this year, mm -hmm. Islamic State, marching on Baghdad. And, you know, the idea that somehow... Huge allow of... No, let me finish. You've had your say. I want to have mine. And the idea that somehow just allowing it all to continue. These are no people who throw, about just allowing throw it to continue, gay men Mary. off. We have allowed it to continue for three years in Syria. They throw gay men off now. buildings. They enslave children as young as five into sexual slavery and they murder women of our age who are too old to be so sold. Much of the evidence, that is not Let me acceptable. say something now because you have talked a lot. So many of the people giving evidence to the Foreign Affairs Committee made the point that actually by our getting involved in the bombing we reduce our capacity to be able to play a big role in the diplomatic efforts. Many of those experts said that Britain is well placed because we're not currently bombing Syria to play a real role in those Vienna peace talks and that will be undermined if we start becoming part of but the effort fighting against that. that. I, mean, I don't know that, but we're looking a, at experts. You don't know that, and they don't know, they don't know it but either. But if you have a House of Commons inquiry, it's just a piece of listen to a lot of It's just a piece of commentary. It's not a basis of a policy. But and surely have, one should look at had. those experts in the area. The Foreign Affairs uh, Committee assembled those experts. They heard it. A cross-party Foreign Affairs Committee came to the conclusion but, that the case had not been made for bombing. Well, the so, chairman well, of that well, select well, committee has now changed his mind. So, uh, you know, well, he's, the he's obviously... What I, I don't understand is that you put this great faith in the peace process. Both of you bigging up, actually, the evidence uh, is pretty slight, actually, for it. But at the same time, you want to use the non-IS terrorist, uh, anti-Assad people. But any peace process will evolve, involve Assad and the Russians. So I don't understand how you can keep the, the, the anti-Assad freedom fighters happy and still have to deal with Mr. Assad and the Russians. I mean, they're both on the opposite sides. But we have to give Syria back its territorial integrity, which it no longer has. It effectively, in the east, is, is no longer a functioning state. That's the first thing. The second thing is we have to fight um, the terrorist factory, the jihadi factory, which eastern Syria has become. And we foiled seven terror attacks in our own um, country since the start of this year. And we've had 30 British holidaymakers murdered on that beach in Tunisia. And let's okay. make sure that we, we don't make things worse, Mary. Nobody is All denying right. that ISIS does terrible things. What we are challenging is whether or not the UK getting involved in military strikes Nobody is going to, to be able right. to... We, we, we need well. to move on. You both uh, had a good chance to lay out your arguments. Uh, such an important issue. I know the viewers will be listening very closely to both sides. I've been getting